peace, love, and light. Welcome to Tommy Bite. I had to do it. I had to get a fake rib. I had to get a fake rib. Y'all know I got that Mac rib. I wonder what animal that rib came from. Hello. Ooh, so how y'all doing today on this fine old Sunday? It ain't real real, but you know, it's good. It's good. Are you gonna offer us any food? Anytime time they say, we waiting on your fries wherever I go. I don't eat McDonald's that often, but anywhere I go, I'm down for that. Oh, let me get y'all first bite. I didn't even say great. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For this so you didn't offer us any food. You didn't say grace. You just greedy. Please bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. Really, it's just a fry. Where they do that at? I was so hungry, I forgot to welcome y'all to my channel. I thank y'all for being here. But you see, I like to eat. But thank y'all, all my new subscribers, all my returning subscribers. I appreciate y'all. And if you haven't hit that red button and you kind of thinking, hmm, should I? Yes, you should. You really should. Hit it. You won't be disappointed. Okay, I have to get serious now and tell my story. There's also Domestic Violence Month. I watched Sam, Sam's World um, had a a video where she talked about the things that happened with her past relationship um, and the abuse that she endured and the reason why her eye waters and stuff like that because he damaged a tear duct in Listening to her talk about it, it was really hard because it just brought back all of the thoughts of when I went through domestic violence for years. And even when I would try to leave, it's like he would chase me down. And I mean, one time he literally chased me down. I was like literally running through the apartment complex and he chased me down and drug my butt, I was about to cuss, drug my butt back to the apartment and beat the crap out of me for trying to leave. And I managed to call my girlfriend, who now lives in DC. I had managed to call her and she came and she got me. I never went back after that particular, because he beat me because I was washing dishes, y'all, and I know when he has a bad day, I'm going to freaking have a bad day, too. And so I was washing dishes, and he said something to me, and I turned around to answer him, or just to look at him, and I turned around, and he, I don't know if it was his backhand, forehand, all I knew it was a hand. He hit me so hard. You see how in the movies when they, you get hit and you they swing around? That's how it was. That's how dramatic it was. 
Like, I... It was a lot. It was a lot. And when I swung around, my hand went back into the sink. My hand grabbed a knife. There was a knife in the sink. I grabbed the knife and I put a knife on him. And he was like, oh, you gonna cut me now? You gonna cut me now? And I was fussing and cussing. Yeah, I was. Cause it was, for me, it felt like live or die. Cause that seems like one of the worst times. And he backed away. And when he went into the bedroom, that was when I left out of the house and I was running through the apartment complex. And he found me, he chased me down, drove me back, and beat the crap out of me. <sighs> Y'all, I ain't even intend to talk about my story. But I was talking to one of my subscribers, and it was like, you need to tell it. You need to tell it, because it might help somebody. So, that was one instance. A different instance, I was pregnant because I, for some reason, thought, and this was before this, um, the incident I just told you about. That was the very last incident um, where he actually laid hands on me. After that, I was done. But before that, he would argue with me, and he had roommates, and I was trying to be grown. I wasn't up at 19 years old. Thinking I know everything, I, you know, I need to get out of my mama's house. No, I didn't. But I did, and I went straight to hell. Literally went straight to hell with him. Like, he didn't care if his roommates were there. They did nothing to help me. I guess it's like, she's not helping herself. Why should I help her? Like, we were, he was arguing with me. And so I know to be quiet. And that's, I think, put me in my shell for a long time, not talking. And so he had me pent against the wall. Now we in the living room. Everybody else in the living room too. You got about five, six dudes in the living room looking at a game or something. This dude got me pent to a wall. All they saying is, man, leave that girl alone. Man, leave that girl alone. You know what I'm saying? And so next thing I know, I see a fist coming at me. My head is against the wall because he has me yoked up against the wall. And so he punches and I just knew I was gone, out. But he punches, I don't know if he intentionally missed or he did that to scare me, but he puts a hole in the wall right next to my head. And his other friend had just come home. Now that one, he didn't he was nice he was nice i'm a his name i ain't gonna say his name start with the m and so he was really nice and he would take me to work i worked at like jc penny's downtown and he would be like why are you putting up with this you know i know that's my friend and everything you know we went to school together high school together but why are you putting up with this and i had no words because I didn't know. I felt like, you know, I done stepped out of here. How do I go back to my mom or whatever? I just felt like I couldn't go back. And I had nowhere to go. And I had no one to turn to. Even though people who knew were like, you need to leave this situation. But no one was really extending, well, girl, come over here. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I felt alone in that situation. And... I mean, I was pregnant one time, the one time, because we have a child together, and I, I really have a child by myself, because if he wasn't dealing with me, he had nothing to do with his son. So, um, he got mad about something, it had nothing to do with me, it, I don't know if it was work, whether he wasn't happy with the work, and well, I'm an easy you know grab so let me grab her up and he grabbed me up and he freaking super flexed me down to the ground and honey i hit that ground that floor because we was in the bedroom i hit the the floor in the bedroom it might as well been the ground because it was like concrete floor up underneath the carpet and 
I was pregnant. I was like three or four months pregnant. Like you couldn't really see. I just had like a little tiny bump. And this man, he didn't kick me in my stomach. But while I was down because I balled up into to protect my stomach. When I landed, I landed on kind of like my side. So I just kind of balled up and he just started kicking me in my back. I don't know if that's some of the reason why I've always had back problems, but he just started kicking me in my back. I mean, every time we had an encounter, I felt like I was not gonna make it. So when I left him, and I have too many instances where I can talk about, but I'm not going to. But that's just to give you a just. If you are in a situation that is not good for you, you need to get out. But don't get out. Don't let him know you're leaving. Like Sam's World said, make an exit plan in your head. Don't write it down. Don't nothing. I wouldn't even tell nobody. Because you don't know who's going to go, well, you know, she about to leave, you know. You know what I'm saying? Make your situation worse than it has to be because they trying to fix something that they can't even fathom what's going on. And so just leave. And so wait for him to go to work. Don't do it while he home and he sleep. Wait for him to be gone. And you leave. If you got to leave with nothing but the clothes on your back, honey, you leave. Because I didn't have no furniture there, so that was not a problem for me. All I had was my clothes, and I put that all in a trash bag and got the, out of there, okay? Um, my girlfriend picked me up, and I never went back. And this man would stalk me, stalk me, stalk me, call me, call me, call me. Um, my mom went out of town, her and her sisters. And at the time, I was staying with my mom. I had left him and went back to my mother. And my son was just a few months old. And so, my mom went out of town. And what happened? My uncle, We were living next door to my uncle, who's deceased now. And my uncle, he was not home. He was gone. So, a... Uh, the door was like boom 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 and I'm like who's knocking on the door and I'm like who is it and he said who it was and I'm like just go away don't you know leave me alone I don't want nothing to do with you I want my child and I'm like you do not want your child why are you tripping I'm not letting you up in this house are you serious and he was like and my mom had like an old, old old house and so it's like felt like the door was gonna fall off every time he hit it and so thank God my uncle came home who lived next door and he saw that going on let me tell you my uncle don't play my uncle's like my dad to me you know what I'm saying my uncle did not play not with me not with me I'm, I was you know really his baby girl you don't play with her like that and so back in the day he was known for things you know what I'm saying so um he came over and he gave, um, he was like lighting into him and stuff. And he was, and, and I was like, if you I already called the police, you better leave. Now his friend had dropped him off. His friend didn't know that that's what he was coming over there to do. And so his friend must have came back right at that moment. And he jumped in his friend's car and he left. And so when the police came, I told him what was going on. But I never had any issues with him because they went over there to his house I gave them his address and they had a talk with him and it was like if you ever trespass over there again you are going to jail and I never had a problem with him him again and because I wouldn't have nothing to do with him then he didn't want to have nothing to do with his son and so that was difficult because I was young but I managed I managed I managed so Oh, well, I'm making a mess. Get out your situation, honey. If you're in that, even if it's like just verbally. Verbal leads to physical. I know this. Because it didn't start off, girl, I'm going to hit you, boom. No, it started off as putting you down, trying to make you feel bad about yourself.
then it went into the hands you know people putting hands on you I'm like dude you know and I look back I'm like girl you have come through a lot you have a lot to thank God for a lot Well, my husband now, and my husband before him, because my husband now is my second husband. My first husband is my daughter, my oldest daughter's dad. Yes, I have three baby daddies. And what? But I only loved two. I thought I loved one, but I was too young to know what love was, because love don't hurt, honey. Love don't hurt. It's not supposed to hurt. You might feel a little sorrow, a little, you know, whatever, but it's not supposed to physically hurt. So, yeah, that's part of my story. I wanted to just get out there to let y'all know. You cannot talk someone out of leaving their situation they have to really be tired of that situation they have to really be at the bottom and you would think somebody hitting you is at the bottom but the mindset is he's gonna change he cried he said he's gonna change he said he loved me he said he'll never do it again but they do but they do but my husband now even though we we argue sometimes sometimes more than we should i know it's all out of love and he's not ever put his hands on me not in a bad way <laughs> you know what i'm saying um and i love him dearly 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 but um yeah y'all so i'm gonna end this because this is gonna be a whole lot of editing with the voiceovers that i have to do with it I intended for this to be a 20 minute, but something came over me and said, tell some of your story. You're on here, whoever's listening. It may not be a lot of people, but maybe that person knows somebody. Maybe that person can, you know, whatever. If I just have one, that's what they say. And I've done what I need to do. So with that, I'm going to say, and that's why I always say the stuff that I say, because I'm trying to reassure myself of the things that I need to hear and if you need to hear it too then so be it take it and run with it but remember to love yourself put God first remember that I do love you but God loves you more and you can always lean to him when you don't when you can't lean to anyone else but you need to be your own best friend you need to ride or die for yourself not ride or die for some man um, I will see you on the other side of tomorrow. Peace, love, and light. Thank you for joining. Tommy, bye. Peace, smooches. So I had to come back on to say, um, since I was talking about domestic violence, something just flashed across my phone. And it was that a football player from the University of South Carolina was arrested for domestic violence. So it's real. You know, get out of that situation uh, if you're in that situation. Talk to your sons. Talk to your daughters. You know, you don't want them to be a victim and you don't want them to be the one that's out here leaving victims in their path. So um, that's all I came on to say. Not preaching. Have a blessed day. If you find the one you should Shout out to Tommy Bites. Y'all go check her out.